the time has finally come to paint the Project C20. But before I get into that, I just want to show you where I ended up with under the hood. Ended up coming out pretty good. I still have to connect the heater hoses. Um, I did put a new heater core in there. And I also made my own kind of block off plate. You might have saw in a previous video that I hated the AC box in this because it came like way out, stuck out horrible. And I wasn't going to have AC in this anyways. And I didn't want to spend the money for a uh, non-AC setup. So I just made my own little block off cover. It's not perfect, but it works good enough. Just got to connect those hoses. I've still got to get a uh, breather for over here and a new um, oil cap because this one, the rubber's all dried up in it and it's just, it's really hard. Still got a little bit more to do under the hood here, paint up all this stuff, but we're not going to worry about that right now. For now, I have started doing the body work. And one thing I can tell you that's great is so far I have, I have encountered zero rust on this truck. Um, everything that you're seeing here for filler is all just smoothing it out, filling in little dings and dents. Um, it's not going to be perfect. I'm not going for a absolute perfect job, but I'm trying to make it look as good as I can with minimal effort. I do know that um, I've got a couple more you know, bits of Bondo I put in here that still have to be sanded off, but I do know that some of these areas um, the top of this bed line here, it's going to be a little lumpy here and there. It's not going to be perfect. These are very long bed sides. So they're not going to be absolutely perfect. I could do that if I wanted to. But honestly, I don't feel like putting quite that much effort into this truck. This side I've already started to sand. Haven't gotten super far yet. And this has all been with a DA with 80 grit. And you can see that even with the DA, there's a lot going on on this bedside. Um, I think there's already, yeah, somebody's already put some filler. Oh, that's metal. Maybe it's all metal. I'm tired with the way the sunlight's hitting it. It looks like it's uh, something else, but that's just metal. Let me give you another, another view. Maybe you can see what's going on. You can see all the little dings and dents and just waves and everything. I'm going to get out a good 90% of them. See how it's been hit all over the place on the top here. That's the stuff that I'm talking about that once it gets hit like that, it expands. And so you'll have like a high spot here, maybe a high spot here. I am tapping them in a little bit, but I'm not going crazy. I'm not trying to make this perfect. But it is going to look really nice. I'm trying to strip off as much of that blue as I possibly can. And that's because there's problems where um, it didn't adhere very well. The prep work that was done on this before it was painted was not very good. And so I got to get rid of as much as I possibly can so I don't have problems with the next paint job that goes on here. But the truck, it's not going to be hard. Um, there's also like this door has been a little bit rolled. I probably won't even try to fix that. I'm probably going to fill the uh, the holes for the West Coast mirrors. I don't think I'm going to go with West Coast mirrors. And then if we wanted to, we can always drill them back out. But for now, those will go away. I've got to look and see what goes underneath the C20 on these two. I don't know if it would be Chevrolet, maybe Silverado or whatever they had back there, Custom or something. If somebody knows, go ahead and put that in the comments. Or if I don't find out before then. So yeah, this is what we have going on. I am going to probably be working on this for the next three days and beyond. I was going to do a video where I did the whole thing in one video, beginning to end. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is break it up, show you as much work as I can get done in an afternoon and wrap up and we'll show it again. I'll just keep making, you know, several videos as I go along instead of doing them all in one. But I'll put them all on the playlist if you want to watch the whole thing. 
Yes, I know some of you probably saw that in the background and some of you have subscribed in the past because you want to see me finish that car. I'm still going to, I know you hear that from people all the time, like, oh, I'm going to get to that someday. Well, yeah, I guess I've turned into that person for, for now, but I will be getting to that and hopefully it will be this year. So let's get the uh, air tools out and get started. Now, seeing how I already have the other side stripped down and almost complete as far as the body work goes, I figured I'd show you a little bit about what's going on, how I've been doing this. This is 80 grit, 3M hook and loop. This is a Baxter DA that I actually bought from uh, Harbor Freight, and I was, I've been very happy with it so far, actually. It was 100 bucks or less, something like that maybe even 80 or 90 bucks, but pretty cheap, but I've been really liking it. I've just been going along, trying to keep it as flat as possible to show up where all the imperfections are, which there's a lot. I'm not trying to remove every single bit of blue, but like I'm not gonna go and, and dig to get to it, but I am trying to get rid of as much of it as I can within reason. And so let's do some of that and you can Watch as I sand. <laughs> So you can see it's not too terribly bad. It goes fairly quick. Um, when the sandpaper is brand new, it really goes a lot quicker. That is just the red uh, 3M 80 grit. I have some, uh, the airboard, I have some 120 uh, Cubitron and I've got 150 and 220 Cubitron for the uh, DA. So those cut a lot better than this the red but the red's pretty good it's still it's 3m it's not terrible but it does start to wear out i have a kind of a small compressor it's probably like a 10 15 gallon probably 10 gallon um i might even upgrade before i finish this job we'll see but i'm going to continue sanding and then i'll show you the next step well it took a little bit of effort but we are ready for the next step I definitely could have dug in more and got more of this blue out here, but I'm not that worried about it. You can see I did get pretty much all sanded down. Now, one good thing to note is that uh, I did all of it from the time that uh, I started recording was one brand new sheet of sandpaper. So it did all that with one sheet, which is like 50 cents, 54 cents maybe worth of paper. And I had used up a little bit of a sheet over here, so 
let's say it costs less than a dollar in sandpaper to do this whole bedside to get to this point. Now we are going to mix up some body filler and I'll show you the next steps. So we're just going to mix up some body filler here. Um, this is a pad I have that all these sheets just peel off and you can throw them away when you're done. You don't have to use this. This is something I found in the garage that I didn't even really know I had it. But I end up using uh, like empty cardboard boxes, beer boxes, whatever whatever you got. Works just fine. I got a uh, like a paint stir stick here I'm going to be using. I'll just go ahead and start putting some of this on. Probably mix up quite a bit of it for my first coat because I know that there's some areas that are going to use a fair amount. That's probably enough to get me going. And if you've been doing this before, if you've ever watched anybody else on YouTube, then you already know that uh, when you're mixing the hardener, just keep in mind that this hardener is supposed to go into this container. So it's supposed to be equal uh, proportions. So if you were using half of this container, you'd use half of this tube. It's something that over time you don't even think about. You just kind of mix and you just have an idea of how much hardener you want to put in. Sometimes if I'm doing a good amount of it, like I am here, I'll actually try to go a little bit light on the hardener so it doesn't harden too fast so I have time to work with it a little bit. And then we'll just go and we'll mix it up. Just in time for a single rain cloud to come by. <laughs> Unbelievable. There was like zero chance of rain today. And now uh, we got some. So I'll just take, I'll scrape this off to get some of that filler that didn't get any hardener mixed into it that was stuck to the stick off. And then I'll just take the stick and I'll clean it back off my, uh, whatever you want to call it. Can't think of the one word for it. Spreader. All right. So we didn't get a whole lot of rain. I heard it just stop. So that's good. And then, because I, I like to use, reuse a stick as much as I can. We'll just clean it off real quick. And then uh, I'll probably give that a quick sand with the, DA at the 80 grid or something just to clean it up. Now hopefully you can hear me a little bit better than you could when I uh, was talking about the sanding before, but that's because I have my microphone. This is a Mobo DI Duo, so it comes with two packs, and it's a nice little set. A company, uh, I was looking for a microphone because my audio usually is pretty bad, and I reached out to them and said, hey, could I, you know, try one of these out on one of my, my other YouTube channel. And they were like, yeah, and they sent me out this set. I've been very happy with it. If it's something you're interested in, and along with any other product I use here, links are always in the description. If you want to use them, great. If you don't, that's fine too. So there is a little bit of water up here from the little bit of rain just came through, which kind of sucks. But what I'm going to be doing is skim coating essentially the whole thing. But I'm going to start with right here. And I won't get all of it skim coated with just this one, this one mix of filler. It's going to take several. I'm trying to go somewhat light. I know this area here in particular is going to take a fair amount. And I just know that based on how it was sanding 
like what was being left when I was sanding it off. I am, am of the mindset to put on thin coats as little as possible. So I have I can sand as little as possible. I'd rather put on, you know, five or six coats of body filler and sand easily between coats than to have to put on uh, two coats but had to sand like crazy because I put on I put it on so thick. So you can see it putting it on pretty good in this area because I knew it was going to need quite a bit. I'm just going to continue on Now at this point of putting this on, I don't necessarily know where all the low spots are. So this is kind of a guide coat in a way to help me find those low spots. And when I hit this with the airboard next, that's when I will be finding where I need to put a little bit more filler in. But this is a great start, a good way to go. as you can also see, I didn't mix up anywhere near enough to do the entire bed. And that's fine. I, I'd rather also mix up too little, mix up a little bit more as I go, than have a whole big pile that starts hardening up on me before I get a chance to mix it, or before I get a chance to use it. I mean. Some of my spreading technique could actually come from my uh, previous experience in drywall. So that's something I see. It's already starting to harden up a little bit. But that's, that's something I used to do as a profession was uh, drywall and uh, house painting and stuff like that. Of course, it is raining again. So I'm going to let this harden up as I mix up some more and get the rest of it hit if the rain stops, which I don't even know why it's raining. There's not many clouds, but as you can see, I didn't get everything skim coated, but I have a really good start. And I can go back and just do this whole rolled edge later and the whole bottom over there. But I wanted to uh, show you the next step because I am running out of daylight. And I don't want to sand this in the garage if I can help it because I'm trying to keep down on the dust in there. Um, it's not like it's super clean in there, but I don't want it to uh, put Bondo dust and paint dust all over everything if I can help it. I probably will end up doing that, but as much sand as I can do outside, the better. So, what I have here is another Baxter uh, airboard that I got from Harbor Freight. I think it was $109, somewhere around there. And I've been super impressed with this machine so far. Um, I've used airboards in the past, but um, I'm usually borrowing my dad's tools and doing usually his cars in his garage and that's why I bought some of these other things because I wanted to have some of my own things. I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it but I didn't want something garbage either and I've been really really happy with this. I have Cubitron 3M uh, 120 grit on here which sands this off beautifully so let's see how that goes. I'm going to do this section right here I want to start up here, but I really want to show you just how well it works in an area where you can really see.
Now you can see that where I'm coming up into the roll, I'm trying to keep the airboard straight and just roll across it. I don't want to come in an angle like this. So I want to make sure that I, I keep that contour exactly like it is and I feel any dings or dents that are in there. So as you can see, it's doing a really great job of making this panel nice and flat. Uh, there was an area you might have saw me work on a little bit over here. And that was that I thought I felt a low spot right here. But to make sure that that was true, I kind of worked a little bit further over. And it is true. There is definitely a low spot right here. So I'll remember that for my next coat of filler. And also, I went across here and this stuff... This roll of Cubitron, it has um, perforated uh, sections, so you can actually easily rip it to length. And the only problem with that is that sometimes you can rip it when you don't want to, and that's what just happened just now. I've got a piece that's slightly worn, but not too bad. And I'm just going to do this top section right here just to show you how I work that with the airboard as well. As you can see, I'm not trying to get absolute perfection. This was just the first coat, and I'm really just finding where all the little problems are, and I'll go back and fill those. But the airboard is doing a fantastic job. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and that's make everything flat and straight. And I'm really happy with it so far. I think that's probably going to do it for this episode. But like I said, I'm going to try to release one of these every day for as long as I'm working on this. Um, Definitely today's Friday, definitely Saturday, definitely Sunday, and we'll see where we are Monday on whether or not I'm going to put another episode out, but I want to just kind of keep this going and really get right through this and get it done as quickly as possible without doing a terrible job. Because I'm not trying to make a perfect job, but I'm trying to make a really pretty good job. You know, I, I want to be able to say I painted that and not be embarrassed. So... That's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this. If, if you did, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you don't mind, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And watch me on the next one. Thanks for watching.